Welcome back, everybody, to Dream Daddy. Sorry, I don't know why it sounded like a, a game theory moment. <laughs> this is not game theory. I wish I was Matt Pat. <laughs> what would a Dream Daddy game theory look like? <laughs> Actually, I want to know now. I know. <laughs> one now. All right, welcome back, everybody, to Dream Daddy. Emily's very excited to be recording some more. Um, so uh, let's uh, just get back into it. I guess we're sleeping. I, we're gonna find out. I think I might have made a mistake and clicked on the wrong load. <laughs> but let's uh, let's let's see here. Honk shoe, honk shoe. Uh, yeah, here we go. Morning, sleepyhead. Five more minutes. <laughs> you have never ever let me have five more minutes. So get up. <laughs> Fine. <laughs> <laughs> That's me with you. <laughs> we have cereal for breakfast and spend the morning putting together furniture. Manda is much better at in interpreting the tiny manuals. We're able to put together a few shelves and one desk, but I'm pretty sure it was supposed to be a bookcase. <laughs> Hello, kitten. Kitten. Meow meow. Meow meow. Also, if you like what you see, please like, comment, and subscribe. Meow meow. Meow meow. <laughs> All right. Ah. So, are you excited for the cookout today? Mmm. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I'm all over those terrible store-bought sugar cookies that's e that everyone brings to parties. Huh? Yeah, those are bad. Which means there are more for me. Hmm. <laughs> Don't you want to meet some of the people in the neighborhood? I pro I'll probably end up standing uncomfortably in the corner with a plate of food and hope nobody talks to me. Hmm. <laughs> Dad, you're a beautiful work in progress. We will get that butterfly to emerge from the cocoon. Hmm. The social butterfly. Oh, boy. <laughs> well, better start getting ready. We definitely don't want to be late. Oh, cat butt right over the camera. <laughs> what? What? No, we have to be fashionably late. Who shows up to a cookout on time? <laughs> I show up early. I help set up. <laughs> I think the cat's stinky. Probably. Could be the box. Sorry, everyone. This, <laughs> don't we think we have a stinky cat? They can't smell it. Yeah, but just... <laughs> yeah. You know what? We're, we're going early just because you said that. I head out the door in a manner reluctantly follows. We walk across the street to Joseph's house with a store-bought veggie plate. I'm a, a terrible cook if it doesn't involve a grill. <laughs> I guess we're not as early as I thought we were. Joseph's backyard is already packed with people and the smell of hot dogs wafts through the air. Small children run through the sprinklers and adults chat in small clusters. So we walk in. It's packed with people. <laughs> What's that from? John Mulaney. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I set our veggie plate down on a table next to two other veggie plates. Huh. <laughs> hey, there's Joseph. I wave to get his attention. The moment he sees us, he jogs over, arms open wide. <laughs> Welcome. I'm so glad you two are here. And you brought veggies. Let me introduce you to my family. Kids, come over here. This is Chris, my eldest. I love this. <laughs> Hi. Hi. There you go. This is Christian and Christy. They're twins. Oh, God, no. They still creepily and say nothing. God, it's the shining. <laughs> then, of course, there's our youngest, Chris. Krish. Wait, where's Krish? Maybe Mary put him in his crib? Oh, and now how could I forget my lovely wife, Mary? Gosh, she looks like evil. <laughs> from what I know like about a vampire, but yeah, wearing a cross. But it's like it's like from what I know about the game, it's like she's actually really nice or something or whatever. First impressions are not everything. It's like yeah. Hey. Joseph pecks her on the cheek. She smiles. Ah, oh, Mary, sweetheart, did you put Krish and Krish to bed? Mm, I'll have to go look for him. What you you'll have to. Joseph takes a moment to regain his composure. Mary, this is our new neighbor, Greg, and his daughter, Amanda. Mm. I'd shake your hand, but I have a glass of wine that I need to tend to. I love her. <laughs> nice to meet you, Mary. Charmed. Well, I have to go over there now. 
<laughs> My wife has a wonderful sense of humor. Pl but please, you two enjoy the barbecue. All the guys are really excited to meet you. Here, let me introduce you around. This is Robert. He lives just across the way. <laughs> your, like, your favorite bad boy character you would have gone with, but didn't. Yep. A uh, haggard man nursing a glass of whiskey eyes me up and down. Mm. <laughs> hey. Yes. Hey, I'm Greg. Nice to meet you. He takes a long swig of his drink. Charmed. Hey. <laughs> Greg and his daughter just moved in next door. Cool. <laughs> I kind of see. He's like the anti-hero, and you yeah. love anti-heroes. Mm -hmm. Even though, like, he's like, bad boy, not really a bad boy, just, you know, surface bad boy. Yeah. You know? If you ever need recommendations on where to get drinks in this town, Rob's your man. I told you not to call me Rob. Oh, Kirk Douglas. Right. Got it. <laughs> oh, Kirk Douglas. <laughs> Robert ambles away without saying goodbye. Right. He's not really a people person. Wow, I think you actually met every. I think I've actually met everybody oh. else. Great, I bet you you're excited to get to know everyone better. Hope you both enjoy yourselves. Men and I mill around and try to try some of the foods spread out on the table. I pick some uh, deviled eggs. Amanda grabs a small uh, paper pla uh, pla <laughs> bleh, plate and immediately begins piling it with baked goods. Uh. I don't want to have to make friends. Oh, come on, Dad. Who are you going to party with when I go off to school? But I don't want to have to do pleasantries. I don't want to have to do pleasantries. <laughs> Dad. Uh, they're going to talk about <laughs> weather. You need to be more whiny. <laughs> go. Do it. Make a friend. I'm not whiny, Emily. They're gonna talk about weather. <laughs> <laughs> but how could I possibly abandon my child at a social function? That's bad parenting. This plate of cookies is my new dad. Bye. <laughs> Amanda shoves me in the center of the yard. Well, here goes nothing. I look around the party and see, surprise to see some familiar faces. Uh, isn't that the barista from the coffee spoon? The cool guy, uh, what a cool guy and mysterious. <laughs> Didn't that guy throw a frisbee <laughs> at my head? <laughs> isn't that the guy who was throwing Yay. a fit at Dead Goth and Beyond? Isn't that Amanda's teacher? Hey, I know Craig. <laughs> but wait a second, all these people living in our cul-de-sac, that can't be right. I'd better investigate. <laughs> Uh, Who'd you talk to? Uh, wow, this is an odd couple to be talking, I feel. I know. <laughs> Burger time! <laughs> no, um... I gotta talk to them all. Uh, I'll do this. This seems like the most interesting bunch yeah. to me. Because Matt and Hugo are cool, and Craig's like your old buddy, so... Mm -hmm. um. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> God, that was a lot of, like, entrance of hot guys. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, That's the same. <laughs> Matt and Hugo seem to be embroiled in an intense discussion. Craig looks on, smiling politely. I walk over to say hello. See if I can even remember what everyone's name uh, voices were. You did him, right? Yeah. Okay. Uh, this is Hugo. Oh, this is Hugo? Yeah. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, go, kitty butt. <laughs> right in our face. <laughs> All right. Well, I don't think it's fair to try and compare two art movements like that. Periods in art only exist because they're unique pro byproducts of the social and political climate of a time and place and try to take something like, say, a Rococo period and compare it to a postmodernism in America, you're completely disregarding the context in which a work of art is created. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> oh! <laughs> which technically I kind of sort of knew that fundamentally, but... <laughs> Matt and Hugo seem to be so busy talking they don't notice me. Craig leans in. Dude, I have no idea what's happening. <laughs> uh, I'm curious how this is going to go. Hmm. Uh, that kind of comparison just eliminates the reason art movements are so important in the first place. Hmm. You're not wrong, but I think there's no harm in comparing one a work of art to another. You could definitely say one painting is better than another if you're, you're evaluating technical skill from a purely f uh, formalist standpoint. If I showed you uh, uh, Matisse and then some... be more laid back. Huh? 
He was more laid back. Yeah, I, just Emily. What? Stop! You're you're telling me how to do it. You, you were saying you couldn't remember their voices. Oh, oh, yeah, I guess. Oh, I thought you were just telling me like the characters more laid back. No. I'm sorry. Okay. <laughs> uh, if I showed you a, a, a if I showed you a Matisse and then something by the Dutch masters, which one would you say is more technical prowess? Oh. I'm so lost right now. I shoot a worried glance over to Craig, who returns it. Uh. Well, sure. Uh, you could say that the Dutch masters were technically more skilled, but I would argue that while the Dutch masters were better painters, Matisse had better paintings overall. <laughs> yes! Art is dead! <laughs> I don't know what we're, we're talking, talking about. about. And I have it for a while. <laughs> uh, we're giant YouTube nerds. Sorry, everybody. It's going to happen a lot. Yep. Uh, uh. We're just discussing the importance of context when talking about artwork. Listen, all I asked was if you liked Van Gogh or Picasso better. Oh. Hugo throws up his arms in frustration. <sighs> but they represent two completely different art movements. How could I possibly choose between the thick, creamy, impossible... Uh, huh? <laughs> uh, impasto of post-impressionism and the abstract beauty of cubism. Man, that's all way above my head. Oh. Me too. Cat. Hey. <laughs> It's all good, man. The cool thing about uh, art is that we all perceive it differently. A single piece could have totally different effect on each other, uh, on each uh, uh, bleh, on each person that that looks at it, and that's awesome. Nice. Oh. Just one, um, uh, just one minute about that. Oh, jeez. <laughs> Hugo, please. Ah. Sorry, sorry. I get really fired up about art stuff. Greg. Top of the morning coffee. I wasn't going to actually say anything. <laughs> Not a sponsor. Of course, I wish I was a sponsor for Jacksepticeye. Dear God, I'd actually maybe get some subscribers. <laughs> I was taking a sip of my drink. <laughs> what? And my game, game grumps lanyard and... <laughs> Fired. And then I missed. I missed both times. <laughs> Just, uh, uh, oh, Greg, Greg, how are you liking the neighborhood? It's pretty nice. Everybody's been super friendly. Seems like your daughter's fitting in just fine. Matt points across the yard to where Amanda, Daisy, and another girl are playing. They're all sitting cross-legged in the grass, picking weeds and weaving them into little flower crowns. Oh. It's pretty adorable. The girls I don't recognize. The girl I don't recognize jo rec ah, jogs over to us. Hey. What is it, sweetheart? It's a flower crown. I thought you'd look cute in it. Hey. Everybody has the same voice with me. Well, th <laughs> they'll be mildly distinctively different. Like, you know, like the mother sounded completely different from everyone else. Yeah. But, but, uh, uh, yeah. Well, there's only one way to find out. Matt takes a flower crown and places it on top of his head. Hey. Yes. Am I cool now? The girl stares at him, thinking it over. Nope, but you're slightly less uncool than you were before you put it on. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Greg, this is my daughter. Hello. I'm Carmen Sita. Ah. That's a heck of a name. I mean, it's not bad, it's just that's a heck of a name. Amanda comes over with Daisy in tow. Dad, look, I'm making friends. <laughs> Are you making friends? You better be making friends. <laughs> Yeah, actually, Amanda, you remember to be cool. You remember the cool barista from the coffee shop and my old college friend and uh, your teacher? Oh, hi, Mr. Vega. I didn't realize we were neighbors. Oh. Yep, yep. You still got to get me uh, that overdue term paper? Oh. <laughs> Great seeing you. <laughs> Amanda finger guns her ways out of the conversation <laughs> like a champ. <laughs> She learned the finger gun move from me. I'm very proud. Oh. <laughs> She's definitely a charmer. Speaking of which, where did my son go? Whoa. Hugo looks around <laughs> the party. He must he, he must finally spot him because his eyes go wide. Whoa. Ernest! Ernest Hemingway Vega! Are you smoking? Oh. 
Ernest is holding a lit cigarette. Nope. <laughs> You're gonna do him? Yeah. If you get to be the dads, I get to be the daughters. Was Ernest a daughter? Sounds uh, like a son. Sorry, children. Okay, I was gonna say, sounds like a son. I mean, <laughs> hey, Ernest could be a girl's name. I was just, you know, <laughs> assumptions and all. Uh, I see Ernest across the way. He casually takes a long drag of his cigarette and then flicks it into the gutter. Um. And, unbelievable. Excuse me. Hugo marches over to Ernest, and I turn my attention to Matt and Craig. Kids, right? Oh. Man, I do not envy Hugo. The last barbecue we had, Ernest tried to shove a sparkler down Joseph's pants. Nearly <laughs> burned down half the yard. Oh. And the barbecue we had before that, he actually burned down half the yard. <laughs> <laughs> and then it spread onto my lawn and burned down half of my yard, too. <sighs> <laughs> that is a pissed off kid. Yep. Hugo walks back over to us, practically dragging Ernest behind him. Hmm. Hey, everybody. Sorry about that. Greg, this is my son, Ernest. Hello. Ernest looks away, sulking, his hands shoved deep in his pockets. Hugo nudges him impatiently. Hey. <laughs> nice to meet you, Ernest. What grade are you in? Does it matter? Hmm? Ernest. Okay, okay, I'm in eighth grade. God, are you happy now? I'm sure you were just dying to know. Uh, yeah. Good for you. Um... <laughs> Can I go now? I'm tired of talking to old dudes who blame my generation for the failing economy. <laughs> it's so true! <laughs> <laughs> we're not buying enough diamonds. It's <laughs> <laughs> the dumbest thing. Ouch. <laughs> Ernest. Oh, yeah, because I'm totally embarrassing you. <laughs> Ernest puts earbuds in and storms off to stand in, in the corner. Well, that was that was certainly something. <laughs> he seems nice. <laughs> Hugo puts his head in his hands and sighs. Uh. I'm sorry. He's having a really rough time. As much as I want to be the cool dad, I have to be the authoritarian dad, and he clearly re resents me for it. Oh. I mean, I think as a dad and a teacher, that's about as authoritarian as you can get. <laughs> Honestly, are you? Uh, are any of us cool dads? Is it even possible to be a cool dad? What? I'm cool as a cucumber. Hey. <laughs> See, that right there? You can't say that. <laughs> My kids think I'm cool. But for how long, Craig? <laughs> how long do we get to be the cool dads? I don't know. I, uh, don't know. Yeah, sounds great. I think we just have to accept the fact that as dads, we've become the machine we once raged against <laughs> and accept our fate to unironically wear socks with sandals. <laughs> your kids may think you're cool now, but the moment they hit puberty, you're doomed. <laughs> Amanda's 18 and she still thinks I'm cool. Mm -hmm. I yell across the yard to my daughter, <laughs> Amanda, I'm cool, right? Amanda just laughs. She keeps laughing. <laughs> I see your point. <laughs> as much as we all want it, I don't think it's as important to be a cool dad as it is to be a good dad. We can't all be best friends with our kids. It just doesn't work. I mean, look at me and Ernest. Mm -hmm. Our job as parents is to make sure our kids turn out okay. Mm. Yeah, you're oh, right. Good advice. But it's uh, nice to have it both ways. Hearing these guys talk about this makes me think of my relationship with Amanda. We get along so well, but there might come a time when it won't be like that. Is college when that happens? Hey. Don't let us eat up your time, Greg. Go meet some of the other people around the neighborhood. Hmm. This is also an interesting group of people, too. The other it's one, Dan, like, made a little Dan more sense. Aaron. Oh my god, it is Dan and Aaron. Oh my god. <laughs> For anyone who doesn't know, Dan and Aaron of Game Grumps actually uh, voice um, Brian and Robert. Yep. Oh no, sorry, Aaron, Robert and Aaron Brian. Aaron is Brian, Robert is Dan. Yeah, that's actually really funny. I'll have to do that. Because yeah. this this one's... <laughs> Interesting. This one's... This is like Christian dad and goth dad. Yeah. <laughs> It's so weird. <laughs> Though you've seen his wife, and she gives a bit of a dark persona. <laughs> There's apparently a like a secret hidden end if you dig through the code where they're actually in a cult <laughs> and i can see it <laughs> yeah yeah i glance across the yard and notice robert and brian chatting over drinks 
Man, I don't think I want to deal with being one-upped by Brian right now, but I guess I could live with learning more about Robert. Oh no, they caught me staring. Oh no, Brian's waving me over. <laughs> Shoot. I flash a smile and walk over to them. Hey, guys. <laughs> Greg, how the heck are you? Settling into the neighborhood all right? Oh, you betcha. Got the living room in order, at least. <laughs> That's great to hear. I've been doing some living room work as well. Finally got the 50... 50 inch? 50 inch. Finally got the 50 inch in there. The game looks great in high def. Oh, boy. <laughs> Greg, have you met Robert yet? Greg. Greg. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we've met. Because I didn't do the other thing as you were saying. I met him here instead of at the club if I had gone yeah. to the club. Yeah. Um, Robert regards me over his whiskey. I, did I give him, like, a distinctive yeah. voice? Yeah, you gave him the, the husky voice. You know, the, the gruff. Oh, yeah. oh, good to see you again. We were just talking about my most recent camping trip. Spent a night out in the woods with Daisy and Maxwell. She's definitely an outdoorsy one. Even caught her first fish. Oh. It's good to see you t taking uh, your daughter out like that. I bet she loves it. Hey. <laughs> that was a Dan. Dan. That was a hey. Yeah. That was a Dan hey. <laughs> that was the seductive Dan hey that he just does every now and then just to yep. just to make people swoon. <laughs> hey. <laughs> <laughs> and it's great that she loves the outdoors. Mine loves being inside. <laughs> Brian raises his eyebrow at me. <laughs> being inside, making art. She won a local competition for that art. Yep. <sighs> <laughs> Did I put it on too strongly? Robert stares at me blankly for a second. Anyway, I haven't gone camping in years, not since the last time. <laughs> Same here, well, things change once you have kit. Wait, what happened to the last time? Hey. Robert takes a long sip of whiskey. Well, old Johnny Boy and me were out <laughs> in the backcountry. Johnny Boy is a strong kid. Met, uh, met him in my army days. Comes from Kansas. They built them tougher out there. Anyway, things uh, go south pretty quick. Johnny breaks his ankle, then he, uh, when the uh, rope bridge snaps. You could see the bone <laughs> popping out through the skin. Johnny Boy's screaming now, crying for his mama, losing blood. We're two days out from the next living soul, and here I am with my dear friend bleeding out in front of me. I'm, uh, uh, I'm a... I'm able to dress the wound, but now <laughs> I got a fireman carry a six foot, 180 pound over the, uh, over some of the toughest terrain I've ever been in. Oh. I won't lie to you, there were the moments during those two days when I thought about leaving old Johnny Boy, but yeah, you build a bond with your brothers in arms, and that bond never breaks. I got that boy back to civilization, but I lost some of me out there. <laughs> <laughs> I guess that's camping for you. Brian and I stare in disbelief. <laughs> Robert takes another long sip of whiskey. I'm just kidding. My friend and John and I went intertubing down a river, and he lost a flip-flop. Miss that kid. <laughs> <laughs> Brian and I laugh nervously. <laughs> or am I kidding? <laughs> Brian and I tense up again. I'm kidding. <sighs> Man and Daisy barrel up towards us laughing. Daisy is holding a paper plate in front of her like a steering wheel. <laughs> We gotta get off this haunted truck! Is this the first time she spoke? Oh, she's spoken no. a couple times, but she never said much. Yeah. Much. Oh no! The ghost locked the doors! <laughs> Quick, hit the emergency escape button! But trucks don't have emergency escape buttons! Oh. Uh, then hit the brake, I guess, and we'll get out of the truck. Yeah. The imaginary truck. Yeah. Anyway, we're safe from the ghost, but how will we ever survive this arctic tundra? Daisy, you might have to eat me. Are you prepared to do that? I'm prepared to do anything to survive. Was this, is this, they're reenacting what is a uh, uh, ghost uh, hunting ice road truckers or something like yeah. that or whatever it was called? I can't remember exactly the order, but yes. Yeah, something like, like haunted truck. Ice road ghost truckers. Ghost something. truckers. Or, yeah, it was such, <laughs> I was like, wow, that's a Discovery Channel show if, hey. if I've ever heard of one. Um. Okay. That's cold-blooded. I like that. Although I'm not sure I have the materials required to properly cook you. You know, <laughs> that reminds me of the last time I went skiing. <laughs> Robert! Hey. Wait a second. Are you guys... 
playing Long Haul Eyes from Paranormal Ghost Truckers. <laughs> that is a hell of a name. <laughs> oh, give it up to the Game Grumps creative team that made this game. Props yeah. for that that freaking name. And just this whole game. It's, it's, oh, it's amazing. For being a ridiculous, like, dating dads, you know, <laughs> like, they made it very, like, innocent and funny also and silly. Earth, there's a lot of real advice in here. Yeah, real advice. And also, like, they didn't, like, you know, even though technically it's all a bunch of, like, gay relationships, they didn't make it, make them gay relationships. They yeah. made them real relationships. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Because gay relationships are real relationships. Well, you know what I mean. Yes. You know, because they could have made it the stereotypical, yeah, stereotypical like, you know. but they yeah. didn't. Yeah. Amanda and I love that show. It's the best, especially that episode where Callum hides Flint's keys and... Flint retaliates by breaking an ancient cursed urn and sending the spirit <laughs> after him. Yeah, it's such a quality reality reality television. <laughs> I don't watch a whole lot of television, but I do enjoy that show. That and war documentaries. All right, Daisy, I found us a couple of bugs. They're going to make a great meal. Lots of protein. Going to keep us from starving out here in this harsh, icy wasteland. But there's a whole table of food right over the... Daisy, it's a game. We're playing pretend. It's what kids do. Because <laughs> she's like 10, right? Yeah. Okay. Live a little. Amanda gives, da Amanda gives Daisy a handful of gummy worms from the snack table. They eat them with mock disgust. <laughs> Let's go find kindling for a fire. Okay. But not an actual fire. Because we're playing pretend? Now you're getting it. <laughs> Daisy and Amanda run off. What a couple, what a cute couple of kids. Man, I've never seen her get along with anyone so quickly. I guess Amanda just sort of has a way with kids. That's kind of amazing. Daisy doesn't really get along Ooh. with kids her age. You've beaten him at one thing. Your daughter is better at his than his at one something, making friends. Well, you'll see. Hmm. It's nice oh, yeah. that he's not trying to one-up me this time. Maybe we can have a regular friendship after all. Really? She just kind of keeps to herself. Her teachers say that she spends every recess in the library. I think the other kids are intimidated by her intelligence. Well, I mean, but you know, like he didn't yeah. try and like, oh, but she's so good at making friends too, you know? And she has, she made yeah. 10 friends last week. That's like what he would, like with his, true. the way he is, like he would have automatically one up something. He didn't one up that. He just said like what she does, yeah. which is like not one upping you. It's just saying his daughter's amazing and really intelligent. <laughs> <laughs> there it is. I wouldn't worry about it too much. Amanda was shy at Daisy's age, too. She used to have a habit of crawling under tables and crying every time we took her to a restaurant. <laughs> she bit people, too. <laughs> oh, kids, right? Gotta love them. You're required to by law. <laughs> well, not really. You're required to care for them by law. You don't have to love them. <laughs> I hear that. Well, since they're getting along so well, maybe we should try to put together a little play date for them. They do seem to get along really well, but the thought of continually hearing about all of Brian's, accom uh, Brian Br Brian's accomplishments is rough. Yeah. That's just like like Ninja Brian. Yeah. Sorry, Brian Wecht. Brian Wecht. Yep. <laughs> Not your dad. Not my dad. <laughs> her my dad's dad was also Brian. Her, her, her dad's name was Brian. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that'd be nice. Well, I don't want to take up too much of your time. Go meet some of the other fellas. This is going to be interesting. And after this, we should probably call the episode. Yeah. I spot Joseph chatting with the guy from Dead Goth and Beyond by the grill. I wonder what they're talking about. I walk over to, I, I walk over to them. Oh, I have to remember exactly what Damien's voice it was. It was I think it was, it was this. Yeah, it was very flowery. He, he talks very flowery. Because mm -hmm. it's just who he is. Yes. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> mm. <laughs> oh my gosh. He's, huh? he's the one in that meme where the, the pink house and the black house. Sorry, read it. Oh, yeah. So I'm curious. Can you walk me through why you had your house painted black? <laughs> where do I even start? The house stays warmer in the winter. It provides an artistic contrast to the rest of the neighborhood, and it complements the crimson interior perfectly. <laughs> it's, de de it def it's definitely an interesting How choice. delightful. Oh, geez, that's actually his voice? Yeah, but, I wow. like yours better, though. I pictured his voice more like yours. Yeah. Well, I mean, it could be higher like this, but, you know, 
having it be a little more flowery like this. I, I think it suits it Thank much you. better. Thank <laughs> you. I'm very proud of my abode. Oh. Greg, I was having a conversation with Damien here about his aesthetic design decisions. <laughs> Damien regards me uh, up and down with a warm but critical eye. How do you do? I don't believe I've had the pleasure. I think I saw you in Dead Gotham Beyond the other day. Damien's face turns bright red. <laughs> I must apologize for my behavior on that day. You see, I take the goth lifestyle very seriously, and to be caught in a ruse by such a corporation as Dead Goth and Beyond was profoundly frustrating indeed. Huh. I hope you know that while my anger may have been justified, it was no such a, it was was no such way for a gentleman to act. I just have to say, I shouldn't have said that your voice suits him better because of course of course his voice suits him. I just that's how I pictured it in you my head. You pictured it more, yeah. I mean, there's nothing wrong with his voice. Mm -hmm. Also, you don't hear it much. Yeah. It's like, hey, oh, ah. Yeah. <laughs> and they all have like one line or something like per date or something like that. <laughs> Joseph gets like the cheese and crackers, you know. Cheese and crackers. <laughs> okay, sorry. Because he can't say Jesus Christ. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Did you say gibbers craps? Gibbers, gibbers craps. Yeah. It's okay, man. <laughs> don't tell me. Do tell me. <laughs> Do tell me about yourself. Are you new to the area? Yes, my daughter and I just moved in the other day. She was the one I took to Dead Goth and Beyond. Very good taste on her part. D does she partake in the goth lifestyle? I think for a second. I look over to Amanda, who's hanging with some of the other older kids uh, in the neighborhood. Uh. Hey, Amanda, would you consider yourself goth? Amanda yells back. I wouldn't necessarily try to fall under one specific label, but I guess if I had to choose, I would more describe myself as twee hipster with some normcore leanings. With normcore leanings? I love how she actually knows the fashion she goes for. I know. Gosh. Bats are cool, though. Hmm. Ah, pity. <laughs> are you uh, enjoying the party so far? Oh, definitely. Thank you so much for putting this on. It's nice to be in a cul-de-sac where everyone is friendly and welcoming. Okay. Amanda walks over to the conversation. I also like The Lost Boys a lot. Really good movie. Does that count as goth? Oh. That would, my dear. I don't believe we've had the pleasure of meeting <laughs> Damien Bloodmarch at your service. <laughs> Damien finishes the sentence with a flourish and a bow, producing a single rose <gasps> and offering it to Amanda. Oh, I love him. <laughs> He's great. I like him, yeah. Yes. Yeah, I mean, just just from seeing him and then the other dads, he would be the first one I would gravitate toward. Yep. I kind of like um Hugo's the coffee. I yeah, like Hugo I, Hugo's too. Hugo's cool. Um I mean, definitely and then um um uh the teacher is uh Hugo. Hugo's no, he's the oh, coffee sorry. shop. Matt's the coffee Matt's shop. Matt's the co I, Matt and Hugo are kind of my other two. Hugo's a little too booky for me, mm -hmm. but I still like those are like the three I'd say are like my, my my two favorites were definitely Damien and Hugo, but I gravitated much more heavily towards Damien. Mm -hmm. You like Robert a ton too. Yeah, mainly because he's Dan, and also well, he's also the antihero. Okay. Hmm. Amanda blushes and returns the gesture with a curtsy. <laughs> My, do you know how to treat a lady? <laughs> Hello. Wait, we have to speak okay. together. Hello, Hello Amanda. Amanda. <laughs> Seemingly out of nowhere, Joseph's <laughs> twin kids appear. Uh, are they speaking in unison? Huh? Huh, hey. Won't, Won't you, you come, come and play, play with, with us? us? God, it's creepy. <laughs> uh... Come, Come play, play with, with us, us forever. forever. Oh. <laughs> Guys, enough with the creepy t twin shtick. We've talked oh. about this. Chris, Chris, Christian is, cr is Christian and Christy, yeah. Slowly uh, back away. Yeah, Emily, can you knock her it's down? It's Chris, Christian, Christy, and Krish. <laughs> all the C's. You have a family at your school. You work at has that right? They like all have X names or something. They all have uh, C names. C names or something. Well, the C family at church has all V names. V names. That's what it is. Yeah. Where do you think they got that from? Uh. M Mary pops into the conversation, <laughs> uh, wine in hand. I uh, don't know. Mary <laughs> takes a long sip of the wine. I think I might have taped over a Veggie Tales VHS with The Shining. Who knows? Veggie Tales, Veggie Tales. Okay, that's enough. <laughs> she takes another sip of her wine. Hmm. Where's Krish? Come on. Wasn't he with you? Yeah. You had him a moment ago. 
Oh, he's probably stuffing dirt in his mouth. He'll be all right. Toddlers are pretty resilient. Mary tips her glass to me. <laughs> ah. Ain't my first time to the rodeo. It's my fourth. Come on. I have squeezed four little... <laughs> Sweetheart, would you do me a favor and please find Krish? That would be great. Oh I'm sure he's fine. Yeah. Mary. Hey. Okay, jeez. <laughs> Mary finishes her wine and wanders off. From what I know, it sounds like she needs the wine. <laughs> From what you've told me about this story. Oh, yeah. I mean, have you seen those twins? <laughs> Dad, can we go now? Oh, yeah, you did do him before. Yeah. <laughs> 666. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> ah, Lucian, I ha have I introduced you to Greg yet? Hey, it's that punk kid from, from Amanda's <laughs> school. I remember you. Whatever. Huh. That's no way for a young man to speak to his elders. Be polite. Lucian bows. Whatever, sir. <laughs> <laughs> Lucian bows again. Mr. Christensen, may I have a veggie burger, sir? <laughs> Coming right up, bud. Are you vegetarian? Yup. Make that two veggie burgers. Did you know that some people in the vegetarian uh, Victorian area were vegetarians? Era. The vegetarian era yeah. uh, were vegetarians. They described carnivorous type people as blood lappers. Dad. Oh, that's really interesting, Damien. <laughs> <laughs> Joseph uh, turns to the grill. Just uh, a hint of a tattoo peeks out from underneath his sleeve. I can't believe I didn't notice it before. It looks like the bottom of an anchor. Whoa! Is that a tattoo? <laughs> yep. I was all. I, I wasn't always a, a youth pastor, you know. That's so cool. Want to see mine? Oh my! What? Everything <laughs> <laughs> a lopsided six 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 in black ink. <laughs> My buddy gave me a stick and poke tattoo last week. I think it's healing up pretty good. Lucian. We'll talk about this later. Yeah. <laughs> Come on, you're the Christian, dude. <laughs> That's pretty cool. What's the significance of the tattoo? I don't know. I just thought it looked sick. <laughs> <laughs> well, in my opinion, the only reason you need to get a tattoo is because you want one. Um, wait, yeah. Careful, though. That number carries weight. Okay. Man, Joseph is way cooler youth pastor than I thought. I just figured youth pastors popped uh, out of the womb with a Bible. I wonder what he did before preaching. And without further ado, let's work some magic. Joseph closes his eyes, takes a deep breath, and gets to work with the greatest of ease. He gets patties on the grill, flourishing as he flips his spatula in the air. It's easily some of the best grill work I've ever seen. You guys, I think it's my first... Uh, uh, huh? You guys... What? You guys think it's my first time in front of a grill? Yeah, I thought I was getting it you right. You were going to say, you guys, I think it's my first time in oh, front of a grill. Well, it's just, there's the dyslexia you go, Emily. Yeah. yeah. He's working faster now, effortlessly tossing cheese onto patties and perfectly grilling onions on the side. Mm -hmm. One after another, the dads take notice and crowd around Joseph to admire his masterful technique. Mm -hmm. You probably didn't know this, Greg, but Joseph's known around here for his grillmanship. He's ungrillievable. Oh. <laughs> I've tried to get on his level, but I just can't catch up. Hey, dude. <laughs> let us me. Uh, let us keep studying. He has a rare quality about him. <laughs> Mustard. We keep talking about this. Can't we just appreciate the art? Hey. Artist. <laughs> I've never seen him uh, make a mistake. Hey. <laughs> Okay, we need to stop. This is getting too cheesy. <laughs> Please stop. <laughs> Never stop. All the children at the party <laughs> boo the glorious display of puns in unison. <laughs> All right, guys, the food's ready. Please form an orderly barbecue line. Barbecue. Oh, it was spelled Q, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. Amanda groans. We all grab <laughs> our food and hang out, enjoying perfectly cooked cheeseburgers. Mm. Yeah. Man, it's so uh, wild how all us dads live in the same cul-de-sac. Hey. Kind of nice, isn't it? Feels like there's a real community here. Totally helps when you're just a single dad trying to raise a kid. Oh. We're happy to have you here, man. I think you're going to like this neighborhood a lot. Oh. 
Plus, Amanda seems to be getting along with all the kids. If she's decided to get into babysitting games, she'll really make a killing. Hey, why don't you add all of us to on Dad Book? Oh, uh, Dad Book? Yeah, it's a great social network for dads to keep in touch with each other. We're all on it, so if you ever need to reach out to anyone, that's the simplest way to do it. Dad Book. Sorry, I'm just an old-fashioned dad. Social media goes over my head sometimes. Don't worry, Pops. I'll help you figure it out. The rest of the barbecue goes smoothly. We all trade stories, drink beers, our kids play on the lawn. Amanda breaks up a fight between Carmenista... Carmencita. Carmencita. Yeah, okay. And the those weird twins. I think they wanted her soul? <laughs> I know I put that as a question mark, but uh, I don't care. <laughs> like, I think they wanted her soul? <laughs> Amanda and I walk back to our place as the sun sets over yeah. the neighborhood. Pretty fun party, don't you think? Mm, I feel like it was a networking event. <laughs> Which I could have been playing Paranormalized Road Truckers. <laughs> <laughs> uh, sweetie, if I can impart any wisdom upon you right now, and not that this was a bad situation, but if you're ever in an uncomfortable situation, always look for the silver lining. The silver linings get you through the other side. We ate rockin' burgers today, and it was good. Yeah. Amen. Hmm. Well, hey, at least you met some other cool dads. You should hit them up on Dad Book. <laughs> Maybe I will. If I ever figure out how social media works. <laughs> I have a good feeling about this place. Me too, Dad. Sweet. I think we should call it there. Yep. Let's uh, leave it on. Yeah. I can save. All right, everybody. Thanks for watching. Um... This is a little longer episode just because it was a whole the barbecue, man. Barbecue meeting every character that I didn't have a chance to meet somehow or see and chatting some... them up. Well, I did see Robert in the coffee shop that was just staring at me from the distance. Yeah. Just... But but I didn't like meet him. And I had like there was like wasn't an interaction with Damien, but there was still like a interaction with Damien. Yeah. Yeah, so okay. Alright everybody, thanks for watching. If you enjoy this, please leave a like, comment, and subscribe. Please. She's loving this. <laughs> it's fun. I hope uh, you love it too, because I want to keep playing. I want to play the whole thing. I want Greg to date all the dads. I love you. Love all right, everybody. <laughs> have a good one. We'll see you all in the next one. Bye. Bye.